everybody. Welcome to another edition of Info on the Go. I'm your host, Dietrich Williams. Today, I'm going to discuss something that's widely talked about but seldom understood, and that's the 1031 exchange. Now, Section 1031 of the Internal Revenue Code allows an investor to sell an investment property and defer paying capital gains tax on that sale. Now, in order to do this, you have to purchase a like-kind property of greater or equal amount. Now, like kind is a little bit ambiguous, but think of it this way. You could purchase a duplex and exchange it for an apartment building, or you could purchase a condo that you're renting out and exchange it for land. So like kind doesn't mean that it has to be a similar type of property. Now, why is this section of the code important? Well, if you're an investor, you don't want to get hit with capital gains tax that can be anywhere from 15% or more depending on the amount of income you make from the sale. Now, you must, and I repeat this, you must do this exchange through what's called a qualified intermediary. Big term I know, but essentially you may hear the term accommodator or facilitator. Any one of those three terms is interchangeable. Now, you have to do it through this accommodator or else you will get hit with capital gains tax. Now, what do I mean? If you decide that you're going to do a 1031 and you don't have a QI or a facilitator and that cash touches your hand or your bank account, automatically capital gains tax. The accommodator essentially receives the net proceeds from you and then facilitates the, the, the exchange or the next purchase of property. There are two timetables that you must, 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 did I stress that enough? Must adhere to. The first one is the 45-day rule. Now, the 45-day rule stipulates that you have 45 days to identify up to three properties that you are going to purchase or that you are targeting to purchase. That 45 days is critical, and I'm going to explain why in just a moment. But the second piece of that is you have 180 days to actually close the sale. The clock starts ticking from the time you sell your investment property. So 45 days after close, you have to identify a property on what's called an identification form. And in 180 days, you have to actually close on the sale. Now, that 45 days lies within that 180 days. So it's not 45 days plus another 180 days. It's 180 days total, but you have to identify that property in 45 days. This is highly important because I'm going to give you an example. Real life. When I first got into the business, I had an investor contact me through an online lead source. He told me he was doing 1031 exchange. Now, I didn't know really what that meant or the timelines or anything of that. Um, so we are going out, we're finding him properties, and I believe, I didn't know it at the time, but we were probably on about day 38 or 39. So we get to about day 44, he's like, okay, we need to... I need to identify three properties. So we go look at three properties that night. He says, okay, let's write up offers on them. So we write up offers on all three. He turns in the identification form uh, before the 45 days is that that clock has expired. He turns it in. I'll give you one guess what happened. If you guess that two of those properties went into escrow, you are absolutely right. So two of those properties went into escrow. They're gone. They're off the table. The third property we wrote the offer for, but he couldn't match the highest price, so we got outbid. Now, remember when I told you that 45 days is important? Up until that 45th day, you can change the properties on that list. But after day 45, that list gets locked. Now, he couldn't purchase any of the three properties that were on that list. So guess what he got hit with? Capital gains tax. And that's why I'm stressing that adhering to those two dates is widely important. You must adhere to the 45 days and the 180 days in order to successfully complete this process so that you defer paying capital gains tax on the sale. Now, some of you are visual people, so you like numbers. So I'm going to go through this example so that you can visually see what this looks like. And I'm going to give you some things to pay attention to because they're going to be very important. So here we go. Now, let's assume that you buy a duplex for 500000 and you plan on selling that duplex after 20 years, and you still owe $200,000 on it. 
That $200,000 is an important number. We're going to come back to that. But you're selling the property, and you can get market value for the property of $800,000. So you put it on the market. Let's say your closing costs, including the commissions you pay to your realtor and for um, other closing costs that are in there, non-recurring, that usually is about anywhere between 7 and 10%. But let's just make the numbers equal and say your closing costs are sixty thousand. So you're selling for eight hundred thousand. Your closing costs are sixty thousand. That's a balance of seven hundred and forty thousand. But you still have an existing loan of two hundred thousand. The lender has to get paid. So that money goes to the lender. The cash that gets that gets sent to the accommodator or the facilitator is five hundred and forty thousand dollars. But guess what? The new minimum purchase price on the property that you're going to acquire has to be for $740,000. I know you're thinking it probably should be on the 540, but guess what? You still owe that money to the bank. And because you still owed it, you can't get a tax deferred advantage on money that you still owe. Now, two things to take into consideration are the days that I'm speaking of are calendar days, not business days. Also, those 45 and 180 days, they cannot be extended for any reason at all other than the president declaring a natural disaster or emergency in the area that you were going to purchase the property. So, I hope that shed some light, very basic information on the basic 1031 exchange. There are several different other types of exchanges. This is the basic one. You want to call or speak to a qualified intermediary or facilitator, accommodator, a company like Exeter or, 1030, or 1031 Exchange will be very valuable to help you. Now, again, adhere to those days because I don't want you to get caught like my previous client got caught and have to pay capital gains tax on the sale of an investment property if you don't have to. So if you found this information useful, please subscribe to the channel, ring that bell so you're notified when I upload future editions of Info on the Go to YouTube. I thank you again for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.